Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Friday, February the 9th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for the day. And we are experimenting with a little more new technology here on the show. I've uh, been trying diligently to get rid of those little blips that occur periodically, usually with my co host where uh, all of a sudden they just kind of disappear and like there's a spring sound and then all of a sudden they're back a half second later. And normally, I mean, it doesn't totally screw up the, the podcast, but, you know, Tom, it's nice when you don't have those little things because they, they, they kind of interrupt in your subconscious mind, you know, so I'm trying to get rid of them entirely. And we're experimenting today to see if we've done it. So we'll find out. Yeah, it's exciting. And, you know, your voice sounds better already with this new setup you have. Really? Um, so I thinking yeah i can tell a difference in a smoothness of the entire transmission um it just it just feels like much less um activity on the line you know in the in the feed that's so good i can tell that difference right away mm-hmm. and what that is i know what that is i didn't realize that was happening at your end but um whenever you send a signal over the internet they do what they call compression to make the the size of the data smaller oh, yeah. right and the mm-hmm. kind of compression that Google Hangouts uses, which is what we were using Google Voice to, to connect you in, or Skype even, um, to a lesser extent, is a lower quality compression algorithm than what this uh, uh, what we're using as a conference call platform to, to do this. And, and their algorithm is going to be a lot better at, at reproducing sound. So I think that's what you're hearing. But that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad because that means it's yeah. also going to sound better to everybody else too. We're going to get we're, we're getting to the point where we sound really professional all the time, and that's what we want to do. In addition to having fun, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we are professionals. <laughs> we are professionals, and we're having well, fun at the same yeah. time. We are professionals. That's right. Yes. Mainly having fun. <laughs> I keep telling myself that I might even believe it one of these days. Anyway, so that's what the, my big news is for the day. Do you, do you have any good news, anything happening that's really exciting or fun or just, you know, uh, just a normal win? Yeah. No, I've got I've got quite a few wins, but I'll just try to be brief. Um, the main one is that I'm giving a speech today at my Toastmasters meeting that is a speech I'm going to be giving to the public on a regular basis in order to um, attract clients but it's also, of course, a very helpful speech that I'll be given. This one is going to be on visualization, which is our topic of our show today. So ah. just in pull, in pulling that all together, it's been very interesting and very rewarding to see how the universe has stepped in to be sure that I'm successful at this and that it feels really good. The other win was amazing, which was yesterday morning. I was waking up at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and oh, wow. I... I had an experience of coming completely from the state of being connected to source into my conscious body. And I literally watched my system load just like you just like you would watch a computer load. I watched it load with all the different aches and pains and thoughts that I use to carry with me throughout the day. And so I got to see how they were all my own creations. Really? You know, so every little ache and ache in my elbow, the little ache in my head, the, the feeling of nervousness in my stomach, whatever it is that I carry, you know, they're all subtle things, but they're all, they all combine to make me feel the way I feel throughout my day. And I watch them load, just like I was watching a computer load its programs. And it was fascinating, just really fascinating. And it made me realize this, all these things in my body, they're resistance is what they are. They're resistance that I've built up over the years, maybe for since I was a kid, maybe for, I don't know from where, <laughs> but it was really cool to realize that these things can be let go of. Yeah. You know, I and they're not they don't have anything to do with like I don't feel ill or ill at ease in my body or mind because I'm the victim of anything. These are simply programs that I have bought into that now I'm going to take off my computer. (laughs) I'm going, I'm learning the ways to release the resistance so that I no longer have to carry these things. And I feel different already after yesterday morning, I could tell that I'm much more relaxed now because I realize none of these things I'm the victim of. I'm not at the mercy of these things. They are things that 
I'm just in the process of letting go of, but they are things that I'm creating. That's just great to know that, you know, um, I, I to think see I, it. I think I skipped something here. Tell me again. Tell us again. How did you, how did you arrive at this visualization? I mean, this, this, this it was a visualization, right? That that you experienced. It was an experience, yeah. And it was it was an experience, an actual visceral experience of laying there in my bed. And I was I didn't realize how much when I woke up, you know, because I didn't wake up when I thought I was going to wake up. I woke up like at four thirty or five. Right. And so I I was as I slowly emerged from the state of being connected to source where we go often in deep sleep, I was I was then noticing that in my subtle half dream, half awake state in that liminal zone, I was seeing how I, as I was waking up noticing, oh, there's a little bit of a stirring of something else in my body other than this wonderful, pure feeling of just feeling totally good. And and as each little thing added, whether it was a little bit of pain in my ear or a little bit of a sinus headache or a little bit of a tennis elbow or, you know, a little bit of a pain in my side, because there's different pains that I've acquired over all my years of living from all the activities that I've done. And I really push my body and, you know, my all the different things that I carry throughout my day and just take for granted that these are things I have to live with. And I'm letting go of them, but, you know, I'm sort of like at the mercy of them. Well, now I was able to notice each of them loading into my body and seeing how they were so, they were somehow directly connected to the way that I think about myself. You know, it, it, it's hard to explain, but I could watch them load. That was the main thing. I watched mm. them load into my body and realized they are not who I am, you know, and they are simply systems that I bought into of pain and feeling stress and feeling, you know, difficulty in life that I was, that I buy into each so, day I wake up. That's what Abraham says. Each day we wake up, we buy into the problems and the physical symptoms that we're carrying from the day before. They aren't really locked into us in a way they are right. You know, because I bought into them and I loaded those things and but I didn't carry them yesterday the way I've ever carried them before. I carried them with a lightness and an ease because I realized these are just programs. I don't. I can change the programs just like you can on your computer to have a better sound system, a better transmission and receiving system. That's what we can do with our bodies. Wow. And now it's just a matter of getting better and better at letting go of what I load into my body after I wake up in the morning. Okay. And you know Abraham said okay. you can get to you can get to the point where you where you don't load the systems from the day before. You know, you can get to that point where you no longer have to carry the tennis elbow or have to carry the sinus headache or have to carry the feeling that I don't have enough money or I don't have the relationship I want or I'm not living in the house I want to live in. But whatever angst we carry or physical distress physical or mental or emotional distress, we can learn to not load those programs into ourselves and to be more connected to source. That's what I'm seeing. Do you now, have, I don't um, totally know how to do that. <laughs> I was just going to say. Huh? I was going to say. <clears throat> I mean, uh, it's so cool. I'm wondering, as the stuff was loading, did you have some sense of, you know, how you kept it going? What, what you know, what thought process or, or what activities or whatever that yes. you did that... that so you had an idea of what was yes. causing each of them. That's really wild, if, if that was true. Because now you at least well, you have I don't some know about idea what each of them, but I have I have the sense really now clearly that it's in my control, and that I know clearly now that I don't have to put so much faith and belief in the fact that those things I'm the victim of. In other words, I see that I'm in control of them. Now it's just a matter of. It, it's immediately made me feel lighter about all of these things. So when I feel a symptom in my body or a, a thought in my mind that's distressing, I realize, oh, that's something I'm creating, and and I'm le I'm learning to let go of it. So that's just wow. knowing that alone. I'm twice as light ever since that happened. I mean, I I feel twice as light in my body than I have in ages. You know, yeah, I just feel like I'm now on the I'm now pulled onto the freeway. You know, I'm, I've 
I've come onto the on-ramp, onto the freeway of now smooth sailing because I'm going to let go continually of any distress that I carry. I'm just sure of it, you know. Now, is this something? So that that's you, good to know that. that. That's fantastic. Is, is this something you, you feel like you can teach, or is this something that you have to kind of learn? I'm going to learn to teach it. You're going to learn to teach it, okay. Spirit, source is going to show me. This is part of what I'm being shown. Wow. And so every day, every day my life, you know, because I'm studying channeling, and I'm learning that, you know, what matters more than anything else is our connection to source, so that as that connection gets purer and purer, we become more and more able to see that what we really are is source and the, and the resistance that we throw on our path is unnecessary. And we're just learning to quit loading those programs. So every morning, every day is a brand new start, a brand new chance to load less of our distress that we've been carrying less resistance into our body and mind, you know, into the whole system, just put wow. less stress that's by realizing something. that in our choice. Yeah. Wow. I, I I'm. I realized. In, yeah. I, I'm just impressed. I, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here kind of in shock and thinking this is something that if you can find a way to teach somebody how to do this and they can actually learn it, this could be magnificently life changing for a huge number of people. Yeah. Because I've never heard. Have you ever heard well, anything, one of anything things, like this before? Have you ever heard of somebody having this experience like you had, where you were able to just kind of take inventory of everything? Um, not exactly. I, can't um, say I, I suppose have. there's plenty of people who do it. I'm I think not so people sure. are more and more becoming. <laughs> well, I think people are becoming more and more aware of how they create reality. I mm. think that's for sure. And if you know, you have you have hundreds of thousands of people listening, for example, to Abraham. And Abraham is constantly preaching these things. That's what they teach, right? They teach, like I was reading, studying about visualization. And you can study visualization from the point of view of other people like who come from a psychology background. And it's entirely different than the way Abraham talks about it. Abraham talks about it in the way I'm describing it, where where they say, the whole essence of visualization is getting aligned with source. And when you're aligned with source, you have to be in this place where you're not imagining feelings, you're feeling feelings. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I'll, I'll explain. Okay, the thing that, that I'm now understanding about visualization is that it's extremely powerful, but suspend what you think visualization is okay because what it actually is is not so much going in there and and closing your eyes and seeing images of yourself successful now it is that okay like when you close your eyes and you say okay let me pick an area of my life whether it's health or wealth or relationships or career or raising my children whatever it is picture yourself at a future time where you're completely have achieved something that you want to achieve. This is what I'm going to do with my audience today at my speech. Close your eyes and picture yourself having already achieved something like the amount of money you want, the uh, relationship that you want, the new house you want, the new car you want, the great relationship with your child that you want or with your spouse. But go to it that time where you see yourself having accomplished that and now it's a done deal and the way i invite people to get into that is to is to close their eyes and breathe and get as relaxed as they can possibly be and of course the the more elaborate this process can be it's almost like self-hypnosis because you want to get into a state of feeling incredibly relaxed if you can sure and and then you picture that thing as being completely done and you see yourself in some situation that says to you, I accomplished that. I now have that money. Maybe you're finally on the vacation you wanted to go on. You're finally walking into the house you've always wanted to own. You're finally going to the dealer and you're they're handing you the keys to that new Audi or that new Porsche or whatever you want, <laughs> you know, and, and you're driving that car. You know, you finally, that's a signal to you that you made the money, you know, or that you 
accomplish that relationship. You're you're with your lover. You're walking on the beach on some Caribbean island. You know you are you finally are th- this place where you feel this wonderful sense of fulfillment, satisfaction, ease, peace. And here's the key. The key is the feelings that you're having. You know, of course, if you're into Abraham and law of attraction, you know that it's the feelings that matter the most. The details of you achieving your particular goal or vision for your life are not as important as the feeling that you want to have when you get there, when you finally have that thing. Because we want these things in our life. We want these relationships, this amount of money, this car, this house. We want these things because we feel, we believe that we're going to feel better in the having of them. Abraham reiterates this over and over and over again. That's why we want the things that we want. And so we get fixated on having these things. And then often we get into a loop where we think, I don't have it yet. I don't have it yet. I don't have what I want. And in that angst, in that feeling of I don't have it, that's where we suffer and that's where we sabotage ourselves because as long as we're vibrating with I don't have it and we're feeling bad about that in any way, we've gone the negative end of the emotional scale, then of course we're attracting more of that and we will never have what we want. So if we get on the positive end of the emotional scale, then visualization, the way Abraham explains it, is is getting into the feeling state that we want to have going forward, that we want to have when we arrive at the destinations we want to arrive at. What's the feelings we want to have? So is it security? Is it tremendous relief? Is it safety? Is it freedom? Is it tremendous joy? Is it happiness? Is it all of the above? You know, is it inner peace? Right. You know, and so whatever those feelings are, So if you close your eyes and you take a session, five or 10 or 15 minutes where you relax, what you're really trying to do is you're cultivating those feelings. You're cultivating a feeling state. So if you can feel into the feelings that you want to have when you have accomplished the things you want to accomplish, what you're actually doing is you're putting yourself into a feeling state right now, which equals alignment with your source self. So if you get into a wonderful feeling, like when I woke up yesterday morning, I was aligned with my source self. And I didn't realize it until I watched the different programs load into my mind and my body of stress, anxiety, and confusion to whatever degree I carry those things as if they're me, as if, oh, yeah, I just have to own those things because, um, you know, I have a lifetime of acquiring these problems. Yeah, right. But <laughs> – when I watch them load, I realize, well, they're loading into a completely pure self. So what you're trying to do when you visualize is get as much into that relaxed state of receptivity to your pure, unadulterated source self. And as you vibrate with those good feelings, to whatever degree you can, what you're doing every day that you practice visualization is you're cultivating those feeling states. And, of course, like vibrations attract like vibrations. If you can stay for 17 seconds in a good feeling, you will attract another good feeling for the next 17 seconds. And as long as you cannot let that be interrupted with your own resistance from thoughts or bodily feelings or whatever that tell you, you know, that you feel bad, that you don't feel as good, then you can get on a roll. And that momentum is what will enable impulses to then come to us that give us good ideas of what to do next but it's a it's a stringing together of these good feeling moments that feel good in our bodies that enable our minds to be receptive to impulses that come from our higher self from our infinite intelligent self so visualization becomes Yes, we're open to the details, but the details, we only, they're only going to come and you're only going to be able to visualize awesome details for your life it, when you're feeling really, really good. But it's actually not on our shoulders to come up with all the details. The universe has in our vortex, in this res- reservoir of our infinite possibilities, 
infinite intelligence knows how to orchestrate a beautiful life for us. And it, it can orchestrate the details for us if we simply learn to be happy. So the last two shows that we've had have been about what is the vortex and what does it mean to have fun in our lives and be happy. Turns out that the vortex will take care of all the details. We've been putting things into our vortex for our entire life, and Abraham says for lifetimes, so that we have a perfect, perfectly orchestrated, beautifully unfolding life. Our job is to have a blast. Our job is okay. to get as happy and free and easy and loving and just fun, playful as we can be, and that's how we open the doors to let in all the details of the things we want in every area of our life. That's the way I understand it. And that's what I'm on the path to do. And that's what I'm trying to encourage my clients, my clients to do. I have a client um, who has cancer and he, he wants to continue to live. He wants to be able to continue to live. And I said, what do you want to live for? And he said, I want to live for my grandchildren. I want to live for my son and my daughter. I want to live so that I can be with them. I have so much fun with them. I said, what else? And said, I want to live for, for nature. I love to go out and go on walks in nature. So anyway, I said, you know, to get to that place where you can have life and this cancer can just dissolve in your body, you got to be in a vib vibratory state where you feel good about your prospects going forward. You're excited. You're eager. You're anticipating having a wonderful life. And so it's cultivating the good feelings and stringing them together beginning right now that will enable us in the future to have the life we want. You know, there's no happy destinations without a happy journey. That's so anyway, true. that's the synopsis. That's the synopsis of my speech today. Yeah. You know, um, of what it is that I want to tell my audience in so many words. Very good. That's that's well, it's a good topic, obviously. And the fact that you've had that experience really kind of nails down, at least for followers of the law of attraction and how it all works. That that's like a pretty good breakthrough right there. In fact, when you get to the point where you're going to be able to, you know, identify one particular thing like the tennis elbow or something like that and identify what you're doing to feed the tennis elbow and once you've done that replace it with a positive vibration so that you've effectively eliminated that from your upload of programs that happen every day that's what a yeah. breakthrough that's going to be that's going to be huge i mean well you're already halfway there really but wow that's going to be really yeah powerful. i I think it's learning. Everything comes down to the same thing we, that every single show is about, every single podcast, which is it's all about our alignment with source. Like, can we get into a feeling state where we feel how friggin' good it feels to be aligned with our infinite self? It's it's fascinating. You know, I, I did a channeling to see what my speech should be, should be about this week at Toastmasters. And when I did the channeling, it said, it said it should be about your infinite being self. And so I started digging into, well, what could I say to an audience that never heard about that that much, you know, my infinite being self. And I, I got st stumped, you know, I, I felt like I, it's too nebulous of a topic to talk to my audience about. And so I, I went this route of talking about visualization, but it, in a way it all came back to the same thing, which is everything is about aligning with our free self, you know, our, there's a part of us that lives in joy and freedom and expansion. And that is our real self. And yeah, it would be great if I could understand as the, you know, how I load. It was like watching a, um, some kind of collage that's made out of um, liquid. And as the, you know, you have just this pure vessel and then you start letting you open a valve and you start letting in different colored liquids onto the screen. Let's say you have a, a white screen. And as you let the different colors in from five different valves, you know, on the edge of the screen, they start bringing in all these different colors, blues and greens and reds and yellows. And they start 
the, the, the liquids start merging together and forming other colors and beautiful patterns and things. That's what it was like watching these different programs load into my body. Wow. And I don't know how, how, well, how would I, I not allow those things to come into my body <laughs> because, you know, I mean, I realized this morning I didn't even watch it exactly exactly in the same way but i could i could certainly feel that i was taking on some things but i could feel like i was taking on only about half of what i took on yesterday you know it felt like oh i'm about i feel about twice as healthy this morning as i did yesterday morning you know or certainly from the morning before before yeah. i was aware that that i it's my that these things are just resistance that's all they are they're just old resistance and for some reason, I still think I have to carry it, you know, and that's where the trick lies. Like, right. And so Learning in, how practicing, to let go of in practicing vision, yeah, in practicing visualizations, what I'm telling people and what Abraham suggests is that you do a practice every night and every morning of five to 15 minutes of getting into that feeling state, you know, that it's best to do it right before you go to bed, the way you and your wife do it, and right in the morning when you wake up, um, or or one or the other times if you don't have time for both. But I, I like doing it in the morning after I meditate. I like to then imagine um, the feelings I want to have for the day going forward. But I guess it's it would be good to do it right as I'm waking up during that, you know, when those programs are loading and yeah, resistance. Right. I can, yeah. I could just be saying, no, what, what is it that I want to feel today? What is it that I intend to feel today? Because the intentions we make are very powerful. So if I say, I want to feel more freedom today. I want to feel more ease in my body. I want to feel a body that just feels great. You know, yeah. um, I want to feel, because I'm practicing Tai Chi right now. And in Tai Chi, you learn to channel your chi through your body and chi is the life force. So in a way, chi is source, mm -hmm. you know, so in a way, in, in the, in the, in the Asian arts, martial arts, you're, you're learning to channel source energy through your body, you know, and, and that's what, in a way I realized that's what I'm going to be learning to do. I'm going to be learning to teach people to channel source energy in such a way that it opens up, all the channels in the body and the mind and clears the resistances there. And interestingly, the main principle of Tai Chi, the number one principle of Tai Chi is relax. <laughs> mm. So everything comes down to relaxation. Everything right. comes down to what Abraham says over and over again, chill out. <laughs> yeah, right. let, the universe, let the universe orchestrate your life. It's not on your friggin' shoulders that you have been trying way too hard your whole life. You got to learn to have fun. You got to learn to be playful. You it's know? it's interesting too it's because it, and it's encouraging. I mean, what you experienced with this uh, deliberate uh, awareness of how you load in all your junk every day. I mean, it, it, on one level, it sounds kind of nasty. On another level, though, it sounds phenomenally empowering because now you know how to deal with it. That's why I'm reacting to it the way I am because early on when I understood that there were resistances that I had, I didn't even know where they were. You've actually found a way to mm -hmm. uh, you know, visualize them, to see them, and to, to say, oh, wow, now I know what, where I have to work. And, and I'm sure you're just steps away from even knowing how they they got there in the first place and how to get rid of them and so forth. So... I mean, it, it, it's, I guess what I'm saying is it is very, very encouraging to me and probably to anyone else who is a, uh, a deliberate creator to know that when we are taking all this time to get ourselves into happier and happier places, there is more coming than just feeling happier. There's more coming than just feeling yes. better. There, there's like, a, there, are, there are whole new experiences that most people have never even heard of that are coming and that these right, experiences exactly. are going to just take us to new levels. We never even thought of. I mean, this is, this is very cool stuff. Very cool. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's going to take us to so much freedom. I mean, look, we you know we had that whole program on aging right. and longevity. And imagine if here I am at 69 years old, I really, I'm 50, but I say I'm 69. There I mean, no, I, I'm really 69, <laughs> but I say I'm 50. No, you were right it's the first actually, time. Yeah, the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, now I was right the first time. And so what if what if I'm actually going to, and this is what I'm choosing, 
my intention is that I'm going to be letting go of different things I've been holding in my body since probably I was a kid, you know, and definitely since I've been an adult. Like I've had this really tight psoas muscle on my right side that's come from all the heavy lifting I've done in my life and uh, and the heavy yard work and the heavy, you know, housework. And I always use my right side to to dig into the earth, to dig into the snow shoveling, to dig into the vacuuming, to dig into the raking leaves, and and at my job, you know, I had to lift these heavy boxes of books because I worked in the college textbook field, and right. I've I've developed this really intense psoas muscle on my right side. So ever since I haven't been doing that job anymore, and I don't do so much snow shoveling or raking of leaves because I don't own a home anymore, I've found that. Oh my God, I'm either going to go to my grave holding this pain in my right side, or I'm going to learn to let go of it. But it's a very deeply entrenched right belief that I'm holding in my right side about, and I think of what it is, is the belief that life is difficult and life takes a lot of hard work and you got to work your ass off, you know? And so I, as I realize I'm going to be letting go of this thing completely. The same way I'm completely letting go of my sinus symptoms, I'm completely letting go of any symptom I have. Um, like when I go to comedy improv and I see that I'm I'm not as resilient and funny as I'd like to be. I, I have <laughs> uptightness in me. Well, I can realize I can let go of that. I can let go of everything that has been hindering me in my life. So that's the hope I think that you're talking about. It's like we can – no matter what age we are, we can let go of a tremendous amount of belief that we're limited. Oh, yeah. Right? And, and even more than that, it, we, we can learn a modality that helps us to achieve levels of joy that seemed previously unimaginable. I mean, there have been times where I felt joy and I thought, wow, this feels great. But what you're hinting at there is a level of joy beyond anything I I can ever remember experiencing. I, we're talking like, you know, ecstatic levels of joy, I think. That that's the sense yeah. that I'm getting from it, yeah. you know. So like, ecstasy is my that's that's, that's my a good theme. one. And and not the drug. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done the drug, but you know, it might be fun, but I've never done that. No, um, not me. I'm not interested. The, the natural ecstasy is what yeah, I want. <laughs> exactly. No, I don't think drugs are fun. I don't. I don't have much fun even drinking alcohol anymore. It's like it brings me down. Actually, it's well, really it is funny. It, alcohol I is used a depressant. To look forward to it. People don't. I know. Don't remember that, but it is a depressant, right? So you know, of course, it's going to bring you mm -hmm. down in the long run. Um, now let's go back to the beginning a little bit because we've, we've described all these wonderful experiences and sequences and so forth. But we need to get back to the topic, the visualization, because that's kind of what. Led mm -hmm. all this off. You had this wonderful visualizing experience. So once again, just reiterate for people, how do they do it? How do they get themselves there? Okay. What I recommend that you do is you make it a regular daily practice if you can. You know, make a ritual out of it like brushing your teeth or something where once a day at least, and that's all you need to do it because you don't want to be tr doing this all day long. Um, that's just trying too hard. You want to be holding visualization lightly and take five to 15 minutes, either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day or both if you really want to. But what you do is just close your eyes and imagine one area of your life at a time. Like let's say you want a million dollars and you, you close your eyes and see yourself <clears throat> doing things that to you indicate you have the million dollars. So maybe you're planning with that million dollars to buy a wonderful cabin in the mountains or a wonderful uh, condo on the seashore. Well, it's one of the things you're going to do, say. So you're at your condo now. You picture that beach you want to be on. Maybe you don't even know where in the world you're going to have your beach condo, but you've got it now, and you're out on the beach, and you're or whatever you're doing that to you signals success, that to you says to you, I've made it, I'm here, I've got it. See yourself in that in that final state of having it. Say you want a career um, in you know environmental science, and you you see yourself finally 
as that scientist, say you're, uh, you want to be an oceanographer and you're on that boat and you're out at sea and you're with all these other oceanographers and you're having a blast, you know, you're diving, you're doing whatever it is that turns you on. So see yourself in that state of having accomplished it. And if you're feeling good when you're doing this, if you're getting in touch with those wonderful feelings you want to have, then get into the details of it, the colors, the sights, the sounds, who you're with, what are you saying, how is that unfolding? You can get as elaborate about the details as you want of the life that you want. But the trick is don't get into the details if you're not feeling good because you can't achieve the life you want by struggling to achieve it. So then what is recommended is that the main aspect of visualization is the feelings that you have when you have attained the thing that you want to have. So even if you don't know the details, you don't have to see the exact picture. Let's say you just know I want to be with my partner and we're, we're taking amazing vacations around the world. So you see yourself doing that but you, what are the feelings you want to have? So, well, when we're doing that, I want to be feeling incredible love for in my heart for my partner. I want to be feeling in deep appreciation for the fact that I've attained this and that I'm enjoying it. I want to be appreciating nature. I want to be appreciating the ocean. I want to be appreciating the sunshine. I want to be appreciating the blue sky and the clouds. Um, I want to be feeling freedom. I want to be feeling safety and security because now I have this money in my account. And if you can, get in touch with the feelings. You know, that's that's the tricky part to me, you know, because <laughs> it's like, well, how do you exactly feel a feeling before you're there? Mm. But that's what Abraham said is the key to everything that we want is to get in touch with the feeling now. So as much as you can, that's what you're doing when you do the visualization session is you're practicing feeling good. <laughs> yeah. In a way, that's all you're really doing. You're practicing feeling good. So you lay there on your bed or you sit there in your chair and you close your eyes and you follow your breath, you relax, and you practice feeling good in whatever way you can get in touch with it. But as opposed to meditation when you don't want an active mind, visualization is letting your mind be, be active but but going to your heart. You know, your heart – is has a, a hundred thousand times more electrical power than your brain does, and it has five thousand times more magnetism than your brain does. So what you want to do is feel feelings in your body. So feeling good in your body. What does happiness feel like in your heart? And what does feeling good feel like in your heart? What does it feel like in your torso, in your solar plexus to feel good? Well, when you visualize in this five or 10 minute section, this 15 minute session, you can practice that. It's a time to practice laying there, sitting there and seeing what it, to you, what feels good. And if, if seeing the images of yourself having the things you want in your life can spark those good feelings, then that's wonderful. So it's, it's, you're sort of playing with learning how to be good at doing that. And each day you practice it, you get better and better at it. That's the whole idea. You get better and better day by day, and you can also practice it throughout the day. So, it, you know, that's what segment intending is. So, so when you're, maybe you're done doing that in your morning session, but now you're driving to work, say, or you're walking to work, or you're um, going and fixing your breakfast, or you're getting ready to go into a meeting, well, you can in, make intentions for that time period. You know, like when I'm driving to a meeting, I'll often say, well, this morning at my meeting, I want to experience love. I want to feel a sense of ease. I want to feel a sense of relaxation. I want to feel, I want to feel inner peace when I'm at this meeting today. Oh, I know what I want to feel. I want to feel really engaged with the people. I want to feel appreciation for them and love with them. I want to feel a great feeling of love and, and harmony, you know, cooperation with them. So you can name the feelings and then let go and see how life unfolds that for you. I've had that happen countless times where I have named the feelings I want to feel before I get to a party or before I get to a meeting or before I get into the mountains on my hike and then I just let go and I feel those feelings. I let, my, I let them just flood into me. 
And I think life will take care of us feeling good if we make that our choice, you know, and we, so. so you're practicing in visualization, you're, you're practicing getting good at being a, a feeler, a feeler of good feelings. You know, you're sort of practicing on being in your heart and less in your head, less in a place of just thinking yourself into good feeling. But what does it feel like to feel your way into good feelings? It's a practice. It's a discipline. You know, mm-hmm. just like Tai Chi, you, you're learning to channel Chi throughout your body. Well, what does that mean? You know, how do you do that? But it's the same with me waking up yesterday morning and watching these different feelings load into my body. How can I become more in control of that? That's what I'm going to be practicing. Like, How can I not allow, not load on the programs of, of pain in my sinuses, but instead load in more feeling good how can i open up my sinus passages how can i open up my elbow so that it doesn't become resistance there that then shows up as pain in my elbow you know know, as you're describing all that it occurs to me there is a really strong parallel between visualization as you describe it and imagination and play as a kid I mean, because the Mm -hmm. two seem to be so, so similar. Do you see any significant differences between them? Not really. You know, I was reading an article about the Olympics, and you know that every major Olympic team now carries up to 10 sports psychologists with them. And what they do is they help every member on that team visualize their routine and visualize winning and deal with their negative emotions that come up of feeling that they might blow it right, they, right. because maybe they had took a terrible fall in the last in their last competition and they broke a leg well now it's hard for them to overcome the sense that they could fall on that turn again so sports psychology helps people to visualize and imagine themselves being successful at every move and the reason i bring this up is because They say, the sports psychologist I was reading, this professor from the University of Utah, who I actually know, she said that the people that do it the best are the ones who as kids were really good at having an imaginary playmate. You know, (laughs) kids who were good when, when they were younger at visualizing stuff are the ones that do better in their later life at visualizing their routine for their Olympic event. So yeah, if you're better, if if you were better as a kid at it, you're probably better as an adult. But I think it can be learned at any age. Oh, I think so. Um, yeah, and it just takes it takes surrender and finding your particular way that you visualize. You know that you feel your way into success. You know you feel your way into the good feeling life that you want to have. Each one of us, I think, has a unique way. And what we have to do is, in a sense, open ourselves to the universe and say, "Show me." my unique way that I channel divine energy. Show me my unique way that I open my heart to having a wonderful life, to feeling good. How do I feel good? And of course, you know, you can answer that question in so many ways because we do know the ways that we feel good. We know many ways that we feel good. Yeah, it's encouraging to know that we we, we can do that so easily too. The the idea of using uh, make-believe the way we did with with a kid as a kid, that to me seems like a good route for a lot of people, because ultimately, if we can play make believe as a kid, we can play make believe as an adult. We may not know what it feels like to have a million dollars or to have a, a completely abundant lifestyle. We may not know what it's like to be on that that boat you talked about as the oceanographer. We may not know how it actually feels, but we do have the ability to pretend, to make believe, to pretend that we actually know, even if we don't really know. And in the process of being the make believer, Mm -hmm. we do develop a feeling. It does happen. It does come. It may come a little slowly, but you know, it, it, nevertheless, it comes. So like you say, anybody can learn it, I think, because to some level, we all learned to some degree to make believe when we were kids. There, There are very, very few people who did not do any make believe as kids. And even in their cases, most of them are like, uh, you know, maybe there was a traumatic situation that happened in their lives, so they're blocking it, or, or they just didn't really notice or pay attention, or, or they just didn't spend a lot of time on it. They were too busy, you know, just doing activities. But even in those cases, it's still possible to learn how to make believe. We can all do it. 
and, and what we're really trying to learn how to do is to be better kids. <laughs> That's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, really, in a way. You know? Just have fun and be playful. Yeah. You know, and we're, we're actually making believe all day long. It's just that we call it reality. You know, we think that what we're calling reality, what, what I'm calling my tennis elbow and the pain in my psoas muscle and my sinus symptoms, I'm calling them reality. Mm. But really, they're all make-believe. They're, they're things that I came to believe at a certain time in my life, and I have all kinds of verifiable reasons why I believe them, and I call them, oh, that's what reality is. But really, they're simply make-believe things that I bought into so strongly you know, that because when I was a little kid, I was taught, you know, that, you know, that this is how this is what's real. And this is this is what's make believe. But I really think that everything is we're making it all up. Yeah, it's all. And, a and that's a lot. That's it's a lot. All, to take in. It's all a dream. I mean, this whole idea of, of everything being make believe, that's all. That's a huge thing to take in, because like you say, we have been taught that there are differences. This, there's reality and there's make believe. Well, what if it's all make-believe? And what if make-believe is what drives the world? That's a big shift in thinking. But at least it's a conceivable one. It's one that we can actually conceive of making. I can conceive of it anyway. It's probably a lot harder to conceive when you're in a place of depression or unhappiness or anger or frustration. It's harder to see it at that point. So I just want to reassure any, mm -hmm. any listener who, who's in a tough state right now, trust me, you can actually get there. The most important thing is to do like Tom's saying, which is to take steps incrementally to get yourself a little happier every day, a little bit better at at spending time on the happy stuff. And it doesn't really matter too much what the happy stuff is. What matters is actively doing it. Because when, we, when we're in these depressed or angry or frustrated or whatever states where we're just all these bad things are happening and we just feel miserable so much of the time, we have forgotten to take time to feel good. It's not like we don't know how to do it. Like you say, we all have these little things that we enjoy doing. For me, it's playing positive music on my iPhone as I'm walking. I love doing that. You know, it's going to be different for everybody, mm -hmm. like you said. But we all have them. So we can start to climb out of those pits that we're in just by simply remembering what those things are. Or even if we're not, if we don't remember any of them, just trying stuff until we find something. And hopefully finding more than one something, and then doing it. Because it's not like it takes a huge amount of effort to go walking wearing my, my iPhone and, and listening to my positive music list. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's actually a pretty darn easy. You know, so I just got to do mm -hmm. it. I just got to make sure I do it. And in doing that, I enable myself to get to the point eventually where, I mean, I'm not there yet. I haven't gotten to the point where you're at where you're actually getting these active, you know, semi-conscious visualizations of how you're loading everything into your body, like, whoa, that's blowing my mind. But I have gotten to the point where I'm feeling <laughs> a whole lot better than I used to. So I know, you know, as long as I stick to that, I'm eventually going to get there. Even if I haven't gotten there yet, I will get there. It's just a question of time, really. Yeah, and, and, it's, and really, it, it, like Abraham said, it's all available instantaneously, but it's, we have to believe that it's really possible and, you know, I, I don't I don't hold myself to expecting myself to be there instantaneously, but I realize that it is my true self, who I really am. You know, like Abraham said, our default state is actually to joy. Our default state is actually to happiness. That's nice to know that life is loaded in our favor. So, you know, it's weighted towards the side of joy. Um, you know, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily believe that if they've had a life of a lot of suffering or they look around at, at CNN and and the evening news and, and they go, this is a life loaded towards joy. Really? Yeah. Right. You know, with all these problems. Well, yeah, because you're focusing on all the problems you have, you know, news reporters going out all over the world, finding the very worst things they can to put in front of your eyes and your ears, because, you know, we've been taught to believe in the worst case scenarios. And that if we don't prepare for the worst case scenarios, we will possibly ha have a bad life. But, you know, while it's good to prepare for disaster, if you're focused on disaster too much, so much, then you're going to be negating, that'll be resistance in your system to the natural flow of joy and happiness that's actually there. Um, you look at a baby, and there's a lot of natural flow of joy and happiness. You look at a oh, young yeah. five-year-old, there's a lot of flow of joy and happiness. And 
it was simply programmed out of us by our belief in disaster mentality, our belief in the fact that we need to focus on what isn't working. Yeah. You know, we need to focus on what isn't working in order to get it working to fix the problems we have. But that isn't really the way that the universe operates. The universe operates by focusing on the solutions and the ease and the fun and the playfulness that we had as kids. And that, and, and as that energy flows through us, that chi of life force flows through us with ease and we open up the channels of our mind and our body, then then we find, oh, life was actually designed to work mm. in a really beautiful way. Yeah, you know? right. That, and that's, yeah, that's it is a par- it's a paradigm shift. It is a huge paradigm shift, and it's a shift that happens even today. The fact is that since we have that ability to make these small shifts in our, our lives, we can get there. And there's a certain degree of trust there, too. Especially when you're in the those more depressed areas, right? When you're in the, the when you're in the feeling oh, yeah. that uh, life is constantly against you, and you've been programmed to believe that, and you bought it, and you bought into it, and you said, "Yep, that's my belief. I believe that life is there to to, to defeat me." And so, when you're in that place, mm-hmm. that's a tough place to climb out of. It's good to know, though, there is a way out. There is, you know, we can take steps, and it's not, we don't even have to do anything dramatic. We can just take little steps. We can just do it ourselves. We can do it in the privacy of our own minds. That's very cool. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Now, we we can change any any Hmm. negative thought. You know, you could say, what would I rather be feeling than this negative thought? And then tell a new better feeling story, you know, and practice that. Get good at telling a better feeling story than the negative one. You know, believe less in what is and more in what's possible. We are imaginal beings rather than we are what is beings. You know, we don't, what is happening right in this moment is old news. What matters is what we're creating going forward from this moment. And if we decide that we're the imaginal beings, we're the feeling beings who are creating the next moment, then we can become more empowered. Very much what true. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say where, where it goes next is, is, well, it's kind of along the lines of what you were saying there. It reminded me of a phrase uh, my wife and I have used it. We, I've heard other people use it. Um, are you a human being or are you a human doing? The idea being that mm-hmm. we, we need to spend more time being. What you've convinced me of is that there's actually a next step beyond that. You go from human doing to human being to imaginal being. And when you're an imaginal mm-hmm. being, an amazing thing happens. You get to do more. You complete the cycle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that, that, that thought just occurred to me as you were talking that this is the ultimate state of being a human being. It's to be a, an imaginal being, to some, be somebody who knows not only the importance of imagining, not only um, practicing imagining, but somebody who lives imagining. Because when you live imagining, from what you, everything you've been explaining, and I thought you've explained it very well, from what Abraham has taught us, and they certainly teach it very well, from all that information, it becomes really cl- much more crystal clear to me than ever before. Imaginal beings have the abundant life. They have the complete life. Mm-hmm. It's joy all the time. 24-hour joy, seven days a week. <laughs> yeah, and you know, what Abraham said, 100% of our job here is our receptivity to our well-being. Yeah. And imagination is part of that for sure and simply trusting like you said and relaxing is it is is the hugest part of it because the the funny thing to me that just that i want to say today when i speak it just cracks me up is that is that life is actually not a problem it's 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 actually not a drama that we that we have to try so hard it's actually designed to work really beautifully well it's like it's like and Abraham talks about this planet. They say this planet is not broken. This planet is has a huge conscious entity that's that's working fantastically, just like the moon is staying in the exact proximity to the earth and the earth is staying in the perfect proximity to the sun. This earth is designed to work beautifully and we get so focused on the problems that, that we're we become sort of like the only you know, fly in the ointment. You know, we <laughs> we do not have to be a problem to ourselves and to this earth. We can we can surrender to the fact that hey, 
it's actually designed to work. It's actually all a wonderful design system. We just have to back way off of our worry about things and get way into noticing what's working, what's working, what's working. Oh, the sun is here again. Oh, the crops are still growing. Oh, there's still food showing up at the store. Oh, my God, I still have food on my plate. Oh, my God, it tastes delicious. Oh, my God, I feel really good eating it. Oh, my God, I want to go outside and go for a walk. Oh, my God, it's really nice outside, and there's trees, and there's grass, and there's, you know, all of it is incredible. The vast majority of it is just beautiful, and we're the only thing that thinks there's a problem, you know? It, it's, so it's like you said earlier. Our main we, job is... <laughs> it's like you said earlier. We, we have this long-standing uh, teaching that we share with each other, particularly we share it with the, the kids coming up through school, which is that everything has to be a problem to be solved. We don't think of it in terms of a solution. We think of it as a problem to be solved. And I am a, I'm like a walking advertisement for that because most of my life has been all about solving problems. And in the course of doing mm -hmm. that, I spent a lot of time focusing on problems. And if I didn't have enough problems, then life brought me more problems. I mean, it wasn't enough. I had to solve my own problems. And my wife's problems came along with computers and this and that and other stuff she didn't know how to do. So now mm -hmm. it's my job to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. And then I get a job where I, I mm -hmm. have to go solve everybody else's problems. And at some point, I, had, <laughs> I, I got to the point where I said, I am so sick of problems. I'm done with problems. Please, no more yeah. problems. I can't handle it anymore. I don't have any time to have fun. Yeah. I'm just solving yeah, yeah. problems all the time. It's crazy, and yet that yeah. how many lives, big, how many careers? It's the biggest reason. <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest reason that psychotherapists burn out, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure it's the biggest reason why lawyer, why lawyers burn out, or anybody who, who, who's just immersed in in problems, you know. And it's why we get callous and 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 cynical, you know. We we think that's you know that's the lot in life. That's our lot in life. Yeah. You know? And yes, there is adversity. Without adversity, there wouldn't be growth. You know, if the butterfly didn't have to struggle to get out of the the cocoon, out of the chrysalis, it would not be able to have the strength to fly. Right. But that's that's what it does. It gets out of the cocoon, and then it has an incredible life. You know, then it really goes and has an incredible time. And I'm sure it still goes through its problems. But, you know, it's the vast majority of life is a celebration. It's a celebration, you know. Yeah. And, you know, remember, remember that song? It's a celebration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Celebrate good times. Plenty Come on. Time <laughs> yeah. That's actually one of my... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool in the Gang. That's one of my songs on my, my positive playlist, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's a good one. So, okay, this has been great. We only have a couple minutes left. I want to make sure that we remind people, first of all, that uh, coming up this Tuesday evening, Tom and I are going to be doing a call-in listener show, a listener call-in show. Um, and I think we're probably going to be using this new technology, so we'll put information on the website about how to call in. Essentially, you'll just be either clicking on a number, or you'll actually, in most cases, um, particularly if you have a Google Chrome browser on your computer, you can actually call in by the computer. You're going to have a little link you can click which is going to be really cool. Um, but there are you know, a number of ways you can do it, and you'll be able to call in and share your insights. You know, Tell us what experiences you've had um, with, with visualization, or maybe you found a, a, another way to add on to what uh, Tom discovered with his wonderful uh, upload program. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> or, or maybe you have a question. Maybe you have something you want to bring up. Maybe you have uh, something you're trying to, to deal with. Whatever it is, we'll, we'll want you to call in on that day. And plus, we also want you to subscribe and share. So if you have not subscribed and shared, do that. Do that at allawaytoday.net. We've described the process before, and we don't have really a lot of time to do it uh, left in this show. So I'll, I'll let you listen to the other programs about how to do that. But please subscribe and share because that's how other people find out about it too. And Tom, obviously this is something people are going to want to learn. So for those people who are ready to you know, take the next step, how do they reach you to get a little help with this stuff? Yeah, they can go to my website, which is yourjoy.com, Y-O-U-A-R-E-J-O-Y, the three words, yourjoy.com. And there's a page on there where they can sign up for a free coaching session, one hour with me, and you can see whether or not working with me might be good for you or not, or you can simply you know, bring a current situation and we can talk about it, and I can help hopefully provide some help for you, some upliftment. 
Fantastic. Tom, this has been a good experiment, not only with the conference call, but wow, you had some really good stuff to share with visualization and, and being able to get to the next level. I mean, I, I'm, I can hardly wait to get there myself, so thanks for sharing it. You're there. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's been wonderful. And I, and I will also invite you all to come back and join us next time that we uh, do the next show here on LOA Today. So goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.